Tom O'Dell. Hello. Welcome to my bar. It's nice to be here. And we're on a piano as well, in your honour. This is. Have you noticed this? Did you build it especially? <laughs> it wasn't built especially for this. Oh. Well, would that annoy you if you were playing the piano in a bar and people kept coming up and putting drinks on it? I've had that before. Have you? Yeah. Where do you start playing your gigs? Because you can't just rock up with a piano. Yeah, and no, I did. I used oh, to. You did. You had this big case. I used to drag it around Brighton. Really? Yeah, it like weighed, weighed a lot. Now, Little Birdie tells me that you were once a barman yourself. I was a barman. Let's see your skills. Sorry, that sounded quite aggressive. If you'd like to, you could step behind the bar and we could make some cocktails. Mm. Get behind the bar. OK. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, Tom. Hello. And Mag, professional Hello. mixologist, you're going to make me some cocktails. I did actually used to be a cocktail barman. I got sacked because I told them that I could make cocktails and it turned out that reading from the, the instructions it wasn't a good idea. You lied. Yeah. See, that's flaring. <laughs> that's really... You look really cool. Do you want me to pour that in? Yeah, so you have to dose it, 50 millilitres. Right, OK. Yeah. Would you like some real apple? Yeah, please. It looks good. Great. Well, I'm going to shake this for some tea. Can I see some ID? Just look me up online. Just look me up online. <laughs> the amount of times. <laughs> it's like a taste of summer in a glass. Yeah. Now that is a great drink. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers, Jack. Oh, oh no, we didn't, we didn't even touch. There we are. There we go. Do you ever drink before you go on stage? Mm. Never. I can't drink before I go on really? stage. Really? Because I can't really either. So you never drink before you go on? No, but I, but I do drink on stage. Yeah. Responsibly. Yeah. What do you have? Can you get away with one of them? A little espresso martini on stage? No, I, I tend to actually drink whiskey on stage. Oh, really? Yeah. I want to talk about the origins of Tom O'Dell. Now you're a confident man, confident enough to order an espresso martini. Yeah, yeah. And you're happy in yourself. But I hear that when you first started, you were a little bit worried about playing the piano. No, I liked playing the piano. I didn't like people knowing that I was a singer and a songwriter. I'm terrible when it comes to anything musical. I like, was desperate to be a musician when I was at school because I thought it'd be good you know, to woo the ladies. Yeah. Is that why you did it? No, it was definitely like an after thing of like not being able to woo the ladies at all. And then you? And so I had a lot of time on my hands. Oh, my mum told me if I was a musician that would help me get women. And what, a recorder? The recorder. Which yeah. is now. You're meant to move on to the clarinet, right? Yeah, but clarinet as well. What's the, why does everyone get... Yeah. I wish I'd been made to learn the piano, yeah. that I may have had a transferable <laughs> life skill there. Instead, I pissed around with the recorder for years, and I know I'm Frere Jacca, and that's it. It's awful sounding as well, isn't it? It's terrible. It's a horrible instrument. Yeah. yeah. And you have, to, you have to break it up every time and yeah. clean out the spit, yeah. put it in that horrible little suitcase and walk back home with that. Yeah, I, yeah, the suitcase. Yeah. Well, I had a plastic bag. You obviously, you obviously got, you got a nice bag. one. <laughs> <laughs> but it was kryptonite for women, the recorder. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could play music. I think, and, you know, I'm in awe of what you do. Do you remember I did a gig? I remember we did the gig. Uh, yeah. The Michael McIntyre yeah, yeah, yeah. charity gig. And you played the most beautiful song ever. And, and everyone was, you know, close to tears. It was yeah. so beautiful. And then I came out and did a load of jokes about my knob. Right. And completely ruin the atmosphere. I'd never seen a comedian sort of before he goes on stage. And like, it's quite serious yeah. backstage. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's a real like level of focus going on. People get so intense backstage, though. Yeah. I think people expect comedians to be all back there, like, was, joshing and slapping each other's backs. I was expecting you to be a lot funnier than you were backstage. Oh, thank God. <laughs> you, you finished it there. <laughs> I was about to pour this drink over you and end the interview. Comedians are constantly disappointed in real life because I think we're no. so not funny in real life, and then you know we project yeah. a version of ourselves. But it's, it's You're a lot more animated in real life than you are behind the, the old ivories. I'm very sort of depressing behind the ivories. And I wouldn't say yeah, depressing. We're, like, we're like the complete opposite. We are the complete <laughs> opposite. We really should be doing each other's jobs. I mean, it's always nice to talk about your best gigs and your high points, but it's far more interesting to talk about like the worst gigs. We did this gig in Berlin. It was on this stage and our sound crew were like, they didn't realise it revolved the stage and they plugged everything in. Yeah. And then... <laughs> and <we're laughs> a revolving this, stage? Yeah, it started and the cables obviously like immediately came out. So the piano just <laughs> completely like didn't work. And there's no, and it's not coming out, you're just going around like a Donna yeah, Kabat. going around I'm just singing nice. with bass. You've got a new album coming out yeah. very soon. Yeah. 
So we're doing this really small tour. We're going to like loads of cities in Europe, in London, and then New York and LA for like uh, three weeks. I only have to do England. Mm. Actually, I had one gig once in Belgium. I went to Belgium <laughs> and I arrived. I was like, are you sure they're going to get my kind of shtick here? And the guy's like, yes, trust, I can't do a Belgium accent. There we have exactly the same sense of humor as you. And I looked onto the stage and there was a guy dressed as Jesus playing the banjo <laughs> and doing jokes and they were loving him and he walked off and I walked past him and was like this could go badly and it went horrifically really yeah I spent my 20 minutes wishing that I had a Jesus costume and a banjo Larry David I love there's a good story about him is how he used to walk on stage and he'd look at the audience and if he didn't like the look of me they'd just walk straight off I mean I'd love to have the girl to do yeah. that <laughs> so when you've got downtime and you're not you know working or touring or writing, how do you relax, how do you um, unwind? I do go to bars occasionally yep. and see friends. I'm just a normal guy, you know. Are you now like, looking to, to kind of grow up, to be that guy that, have you, had, have you thrown your first dinner party? That's I've, where I'm angling. I've had people over for a roast. For a roast? Yeah. So that kind of counts. But I'm not, I'm not a very good cook. Are you ready to commit to it though, to, have, to like throw in the dinner party? Because that's a big moment for a young man. I do have a chef's apron outfit though which I specifically went to buy for this roast I did. I like that. All of which you can see evidence of on my Instagram account. Nice plug for the followers. Very gentle plugging. Never, gentle. never make it obvious. Yeah. I think you have to be subtle. I'm always subtle on that Jack Whitehall. Jack Whitehall. No, at Jack Whitehall is my Twitter. See, subtle. So Tom, do you want uh, another drink? I think I'm okay actually, Jack. It's been great talking to you. Thanks. Cheers, Tom.